And my path was, in my opinion, a very lucky path. Uh, and I have to say thank you to the people that shared with me the experiences in the different institutes, because this is, for me, the added value to, to our work. Team work is uh, what we do. Okay, now to dig into epigenetics. Uh, to understand epigenetics, we have to realize that we have different cells in the body, the cell of the eye, the heart uh, cells, the brain. They all uh, look very different, but they have the same DNA. Why do they look so different? Because they have different epigenomes. One genome, various epigenomes. What's an epigenome? You have to realize that DNA, uh, and sorry if uh, you know everything, <laughs> what I'm saying, but you know, the audience is mixed. So sometimes uh, someone will feel like uh, too basic and the others will understand something new. <laughs> so um, the DNA is wrapped around uh, the histone octamer to form a nucleosome. Histones are these proteins that can be heavily modified, both in their core and their tails. And the uh, uh, chemical modifications that occur on these proteins lead to completely different outcomes in the structure of the DNA. Some modifications lead to completely open chromatin structures, others to very closed and compacted chromatin structures. In the first case, uh, the chromatin, the DNA, is accessible to the transcription machinery and is therefore transcribed. So DNA gives rise to RNA. In the other case, uh, when uh, the, the structure is very tight and heterochromatinized, the DNA is not accessible to the transcription of machinery. So we have uh, histone methylations, histone modifications in general, uh, but we also have modifications on the DNA itself, which modification mainly cytosine methylation. What is the role of uh, cytosine methylation? There are many roles. It can be either activating or repressing. Uh, the DNA methyl transferases uh, are a family that comprise five members, maybe more, because new are, are discovered nowadays. And there are the novo methyl transferases, maintenance methyl transferases that keep the DNA methylation across the cell cycle. Uh, and then there are erasers. So I said that DNA methylation usually brings to repression of transcription. And that first phenomenon where DNA methylation was really discovered to have a role is uh, control of the genomic uh, imprinting, uh, imprinted genes. That is why we are not crocodiles. I don't know if you heard in the news about a female crocodile that reproduces herself through parthenogenesis. Well, we cannot do that because of imprinted genes. What are imprinted genes? These are genes that are either expressed or repressed, always if they come from the mother or from the father. So we receive two copies in the embryo of each gene, and the imprinted genes are those copies or those genes that when they are uh, received from the father, they're always repressed or expressed, and vice versa, when they're received from the mother, they're always repressed or expressed. So this means that if we do not receive both the father and the mother copy, uh, we have either a completely repressed gene or a gene that is expressed twicely abundant, right? These genes appear to be uh, very important, happen to be very important for the embryo development, and this is why we need the father and the mother copy. So DNA methylation is very important for us and for our development. Now let's talk about some uh, definitions. What's epigenetics? You understand now that is all those processes that lead to heritable changes in DNA expression that do not involve any change in the DNA sequence. By uh, analogy, epitranscriptomics is also the um, compound of all processes that change definitely the life of the RNA, uh, changes that do not involve any change in the RNA sequence itself. Um, RNA can be modified. There are more than 170, 170 RNA modifications. They have been discovered in the 70s and for a long time not studied because of a lack of powerful techniques. Now we have powerful techniques to study them and we are finally uncovering new roles for these modifications. The modification can occur at the sugar and this is indicated by, I will use the cursor, uh, uh, by the small uh, sign symbol after the base, okay? When the symbol is before the base, this is a modification that happens on the uh, on the base on the 
and not on the sugar. Okay, these are really distributed across all kingdoms of life and uh, pathways that bring uh, RNA modifications are very conserved. Looking at mRNAs, so the RNA that give rise to proteins, um, they are really decorated with many modifications, uh, among which M6A is for sure the most uh, well studied nowadays. It has a lot of functions and, and effects on translation uh, rate, uh, stability of the RNA, alternative splicing, nuclear cytoplasmic trafficking is really a modification that is coming and becoming more and more important in many different aspects of RNA life, of the RNA life. Another one, a modification that is much less abundant, but still present and significantly present on mRNAs is 5-MC, 5 methyl 5 cytosine. Uh, this one is more mm, mm, involved in RNA trafficking and in RNA protein interactions. It's clear now that mm, the, uh, uh, let's say, um, this regulation of RNA epigenetic pathways is now uncovered to, to have fundamental roles in the pathogenesis of many human diseases, including cancer. And this is because, again, RNA modifications have impact on translation, stability, higher order structures, RNA protein interactions, many different uh, aspects in the life of an mRNA or a non-coding RNA. Now, talking about what I did on uh, to study RNA modifications, I uh, decided to investigate on RNA modifications in Arabidopsis thaliana, particularly 5-methylcytosine, because at that time, in 2014, uh, no one uh, did that before, so I thought it, it was a good occasion. I had a tool that I developed in Germany during my PhD that was, uh, it's called Meripsec. Uh, it was inspired by similar techniques uh, uh, used on DNA. I just shifted this method on RNA, what you do is you purify RNAs, you incubate these RNAs with an antibody that specifically recognizes the methylation or modification you're looking for. You uh, incubate RNA and antibody, you pull down all the, anti all the RNAs that are bound by the antibody, and then you send for massive uh, sequencing. And using this method, to make a long story short, we found out, together with collaborators in, uh, in Max Planck in Berlin, that um, the mRNAs in plants that move from shoot to root, you know, long distance, they are methylated. And this methylation is important for their trafficking. This probably means, this will be the next paper, I hope, not for me, unfortunately, but from the collaborators in Germany. This means that this methylation is probably a recognition site for some transporter proteins that are yet non-identified. Uh, another modification that I studied was uh, 6-methyladenosine. Uh, this was in collaboration with my um, group in uh, uh, Germany for, during my PhD uh, studies. In Germany, I studied uh, a particular locus in mouse chromosomes. This is called the pericentromeric heterochromatic locus. What's this locus? It's a genetic uh, locus that contains no genes only repetitive sequences, and it's really uh, forming a compact heterochromatic domain to which the kinetochore attaches, the mitotic spindle attaches to, to separate uh, chromosomes during mitosis. Um, this non-coding DNA still is transcribed into long non-coding RNAs that are really spurious inside, they are repetitive, they are AT rich, they really codify, they really code nothing. But they do something important. They form some RNA-DNA hybrid. So at pericentric heterochromatin, you do not have double-stranded DNA around nucleosomes. You have some double-stranded DNA, but you also have some RNA-DNA hybrid around the nucleosomes. And uh, this hybrid formation is stabilized by the chemical modifications, M6A in this case. And it is important because it is a docking signaling for some histone modifiers, okay, such as SUBAR39 enzymes. And so again, here we found out that M6A stabilizes a hybrid, and this might be relevant for who studies, for example, R loops, which are hybrids occurring at completely different genetic logic. 
And I'm already at the end of uh, my presentation. I would like just to give you the perspective as we are in the PRP, Pathogen Readiness Platform project. I want to say that there are several, uh, you know, techniques that you can use to map RNA modifications. Um, all of them, except mass spectrometry, all of them are indirect. You have to use either chemical conversion or an antibody, but you have mass spectrometry, which is direct, but it's not sequence, sequencing, right? You have nanopore that we have here in house uh, that is directly identifying RNA modifications and sequencing at the same time. The technique uh, you will hear about Margherita, Danilo, uh, nanopore in general is complicated instrument uh, still under evolution and detection of RNA modification with nanopore is not uh, an easy task, but it's doable. And with this, I would like to say that within the PRP, we might be interested in viral epitranscriptomics because this exists already since quite some years. There are reviews out there that describe how RNA modifications are important for the entire life cycle of a virus, from its uh, stability of the RNA, translation, splicing, and uh, there are several publications already uh, out there that utilize already nanopore, for example, that show what's the function of RNA modifications in uh, um, on virus, on infections, and I'm sure not the right person to uh, autonomously suggest some brilliant projects on this topic, because this is not my topic, but together with you, we could think about, and together with Danilo, Margherita, that are on experts, nanopore experts, we can think about something really uh, cutting edge. Thank you.